So this is What If Callum Was Kryptonian Part 4. Now this is a continuation of What If I Did Months Ago. And basically I think I did this, you know, What If last year. It was a couple months ago, but it was like in 2020. 2021. So basically this is a continuation of What If Deku... Oh, sorry. What If Callum Was Kryptonian Part 4. And, you know, some people have been asking, you know, please to make a part four to continue the series. Now I am, I may be continuing my What If Callum had the Omnitrix series and other stuff like that. So I am going to be, I might continue that and I also might make a new Callum What If, maybe What If Callum was, uh, doc, What If Callum knew magic like Doctor Strange or maybe What If Callum, I don't know. A speedster, something like that, something, something out of the way like that, but yeah. So, this isn't gonna be a finale, but in part six and maybe part seven, it might be the finale, but part 10 and everything like that is probably gonna get near the end of season two. And I might end off the series at season two and try to, you know, pretty much throw all of season three in one episode. So Calum will just finish all the problems in season three by himself with his superpowers. But yeah, enough of that. Last time I left off, I left off on episode, um, I think episode two of season two of Calum finding out about his dad's death. As he would, you know, still figure it out as pretty much Calum would be distraught and heartbroken. As he would also be filled with rage and vengeance. As he would be... Staying on top of a mountain peak area near the same, you know, forest area, the rest of the the rest of the group were. As Cal would fly back down there, as as Rayla would have tried to, you know, tell Cal that I was trying to tell you before, but you weren't listening. As Cal would have told her that it's okay, and basically just saying that he needs to figure out who killed his father, and he needs to find it now. As he is told by Cal, pretty much Rayla to stop and, you know, take it slow, as well, Callum grabs her arm and starts to, well, not break it, but starts to hurt her as she tells, you know, Caleb, not Caleb, but pretty much, yeah, Ka Callum, that you're hurting me. As Callum would have looked at her with his eyes going bright red, as he would have just, you know, let go of her arm, walking off, as he would be filled with rage, anger, and admission, as he would still have to figure it out and break it down to his younger brother. As Callum would have did this, as Callum would have gone to his uncle brother and trying to explain to him, but he wouldn't have the courage to wake him up and tell him the bad news. As Callum would have walked off, him staying on top of the building or the you know area where, well, Israel was sitting or not sitting, but laying down, aka napping, as he would just be sitting there staring off in the moonlight sky. Moonlight sky. As he would have his eyes glowing bright red as he would be filled with rage, anger, and the intent to kill for the first time in his life. As Callum would have been sitting there, as we would get switched to pretty much Claudia's brother basically toying around with his sword. Now that, now that sword, his actual sword. As he would have looked at his brother, he looked at his sister as Claudia would have walked in as she would have been crying. Basically him saying, how did your little date go at, before he saw her cry. As he would see her cry, trying to comfort her, asking what happened. As she would have told him that I told Callum about the king and basically everything. As we would get switched back to that morning, as Callum would have not got a glimpse of sleep, but him not feeling tired at all, since, well, Kryptonians feed off of solar radiation while they're under a, you know, a yellow sun, so they don't need to eat, sleep, or even drink for that matter. They don't need any human, you know, well, nutrients. For a very very long time not even their whole lifespan they choose to eat this simple superman chooses to eat to feel more human but he doesn't really need to so basically calm sits there until his brother wakes up zooming into the room as he would start to talk to his brother as his brother would be talking to him as calm would have just broke it you know clean and easy to him right when they were walking down you know the rock the walk area throughout the you know garden as he would just tell him straight up, not really caring for his feelings, still caring about him, but not really wanting to, you know, pretty much drag it out. As he would tell him right then and there, as he would be distraught and overall just like his whole life was 
torn away from him. As Callum would have told him this, as he would be pretty much, you know, crying and, you know, just weeping. And Callum would have joined him. As Callum would still be thinking about the, you know, what he should do. Should he find the person that killed his father? He wants to, but what will he do when he finds that person? Can he even control himself after he sees the person that killed his father? After he really, truly figures out everything? Can he really hold himself back from doing something he might regret? As Calum talks to Rayla about this, as Rayla just tells him that it's up to you if you really want to do this, if you really want, if you really think you can hold yourself back not to kill the person that killed your father, that's up to you. As pretty much Callum is still, you know, coping with the death of his father and also still coping with the other part of him that is feeling like he should do something out of the box, something that he truly might regret as he's talking to pretty much Rayla as he cries and Rayla comforts her. As we get to watch the Claudia's father, as Claudia's father is just, well, chilling as he tries to figure out, you know, what's going on and where they are. As Claudia's father looking through the mirror, as he sees the moon witch, or the, not moon witch, the moon elf, aka the elf that's, you know, the whole, you know, the elf that does all the, you know, illusions and stuff like that. As she's pretty much looking through books as she's staying next to the fireplace. As this part of the story or part of this episode goes somewhat exactly the same, nothing changing too much. As Callum is switched back with Rayla, as he talks to Rayla, basically, you know, just them having the same type of conversation as Rayla is still shook from last night as she knew in her power she really couldn't really do nothing against Callum. But she still knows deep down inside Callum's a good person and he wouldn't do anything like that to her or anybody. Well, not at least now. But basically, as Callum talks to Rayla, basically back and forth, eventually Callum... Uh, Callum sees Claudia and her brother as they, you know, walk up to pretty much, well, what was it? Walk up to Callum. As Callum talks about, we have to go back to the, you know, pretty much palace, the kingdom. As Soren still, Soren, Claudia's brother, still does the same type of taunting about how your father's going to be real disappointed. As Callum gets pissed off by this, before Claudia can even do anything, pretty much, well, Callum grabs Soren's throat and starts to fire up his laser vision. Imagining killing him as Callum snaps himself out of it Callum feeling like he's done something very very wrong as he does go Soren as Soren sees what was going on in his eyes as he knew that Callum Deep down inside wanted to kill him for just making that little joke as Soren would have backed up Saying I'm sorry Callum as Callum would have said it's okay. I'm sorry As Callum would have started to cool off him not trying to you know do anything he might regret as as Soren still walks off, him still you know getting into the whole brush with the moths. As he walks off, as well Claudia continues to talk to well Callum. As Callum is about to go, as Claudia tells him that I have to give you something before you go, but in private. As they walk off into pretty much the area that you know her, her and her brother was sleeping in, as she. Callum still asks the same question about, you know, closed door, open door situation, like, should I close or, you know, open it as, or leave it open, as, you know, she says closed door is fine, as Callum closes the door, thinking he finna get some, like, bro, like, who asked that question without thinking they finna get some, so, basically, Callum, as Callum's given the letter that, you know, pretty much, Claudia found that Callum dropped that was from his, well, father, as Callum still talks to Claudia the same way as he still doesn't really want to open it yet. As he just, well, doesn't feel like it's right or doesn't feel like it's the right time. As Callum still thanks Claudia about, you know, pretty much, uh, well, thanks her for everything. As pretty much Claudia says, so I guess this is goodbye. As Callum says, not forever, but I'll meet you again someday. As Claudia gives... Callum a hug as Callum hugs her back as me personally bro she really just gave this man a hug like not not even a peck on the cheek come on bro like that, that's weak but the dragon egg aka Zim his name as 
pretty much well a Zor Zor not Zoran but Israel tries to pit Zim in you know the egg bag that they pit him in before as he was being you know carried all the way to the mountain to be hatched as as you know pretty much well Zim Zim and Israel still have the same you know you know back and forth as they still have the same you know well a quirky type of arguments and also shenanigans as Raylis just enjoying well just chilling watching uh Israel and Zim play around with each other as we get switched to Callum walking into the room as he tells them that it's time to go as Callum says we gotta get back on the road to Zadia because before I said kingdom but I meant Zadia uh so basically well Callum does you know well answer Raylis question as Raylis still asks the same question about did you know did Claudia still that still try to convince you to go back to the kingdom as Callum is still distraught for this matter as he still doesn't know if she should go back to kingdom or pretty much take Zim to Zadia but he still wants to take Zim to Zadia to stop this war from brewing as Callum knows he doesn't decide if he really holds if he really stops holding back he could possibly end this whole war one single handedly but a way more brutal way as he doesn't want to have too much blood or any blood on his hands as Callum just shucks, shakes his thought away, as Callum looks towards, you know, well, Rayla, and basically says that it's time to, you know, get going. As Callum still tells her that, you know, that, you know, well, Claudia understood us going to Zadia to, you know, give Zim to the dragon, as well, they understood so well that they would have come with us. As Rayla is overall confused and also kind of pissed off by this saying you know what as Callum says well, what's the big harm like look at me I'm invincible I can fly I can shoot lizards on my eyes I'm literally the best well I wouldn't say whipping but I can protect myself I can protect you guys too like let's be real they won't be able to pull anything you know too out of hand you know as you know Rayla still says that you know that's the worst possible plan as Callum says how is it how how as she says, well, it could be a trap. As Callum just says, man, stop, stop with that. Stop with that. It's not a trap. And if it was a trap, I'll just ask them if it is and just listen to their heartbeat. As Callum does, you know, pretty much pick up on this tactic, as he does read a lot of health books on human anatomy doing, doing before he left the kingdom. So at this point, Callum's super hearing isn't complete completely potent he has to be at least six feet you know towards a person to hear their heartbeat precisely and very clearly but he could hear their heartbeat or their sounds of their voices about let's say let's say about 30 30 feet away so yeah as claudia still tries to reason with callum not to let them go with him not to let them go with us as callum you know goes against it still saying that they have to come or i want them to come as they still, you know, they don't really have that conversation about help or trap because Callum just is going to use or try to use his super hearing on their, well, bodies to see if they're lying or not. Rayla goes to talk to the elf as the other elf, pretty much the, you know, pretty much the caster, as she tells her that we're about to go as she still has the same conversation with her the same way and basically doesn't really you know switch it up much at all it going the same way and them having the same exact conversation like in you know original a uh, well original show as callum as we can switch away from you know rayla talking to the elf about how she doesn't really know truly if they can trust them because she doesn't really have much faith in callum's whole super hearings thing as callum tries to use the super hearing on them for some reason somehow well, for some reason, somehow, pretty much Claudia has some sort of magic barrier on her that doesn't allow anybody to pierce into her inner workings, aka like X-ray vision or anybody trying to put a curse inside of her or poison. So basically, pretty simple, Deku can't use, I'm sorry, Callum can't use his, you know, super hearing or X-ray vision on them. He can still see through their skin or their bone structure but he can't you know hear their heartbeat so and the same thing was with Zorin 
for some reason. As Callum is, is still on the fence, but he's still deep down inside, Bo trusts him. As Ezra and Callum are, you know, still hold it up, as Rayla talks to Zorin and pretty much Claudia and also the wolf girl to pretty much, you know, get everything, you know, set and ready as Zorin is stretching to get ready to go. As Callum is on a nearby mountainside, him hearing or trying to think and calm down as he gets ready for the journey. As Callum jumps off the mountain with little to no effort as he lands Superman style into a crater. Now Callum walks off and pretty much doing the end of the series, Callum will most likely very much become way more powerful and I won't nerf him too much for the entire duration or the rest of the series. Piss simple, Callum is going to be way more OP, and I'm not going to try to water him down this time. He still lives in a world with magic, so he is still going to be vulnerable since Kryptonians are vulnerable to magic. But just be simple, well, that Callum is going to have to face some big problems, but he is still going to be, you know, Superman esque powerful. He isn't going to be too weak. So, yeah, so he's not going to be, you know, too water down he's gonna be still OP like superman is because superman is a broken character like it's nothing he it's nothing that you it's nothing that dude can't do like for real like let's be real what can superman not do physically at least like come on let's be real superman is literally pretty simple godlike so yeah so basically he even became a god at one time in the comic book panel so pretty simple yeah so basically as the journey or the Pretty much, well, everybody does their same journey or goes on the trip. As Zorn goes on a little bit of a detour to try to kill Rayla, as Rayla goes on to get some berries to pretty much, well, get her stomach full before they go on their big journey back to pretty much, well, Zadia. As, well, Cal Callum sees us by far looking through some rocks as he tries to jump in. As Callum flies down, not flies down, but he jumps down. Breaking up the fight as he grabs the pretty much, well, as he grabs the pretty much sword, cracking it in two. As he looks up, as he also sees that, well, Israel and the wolf girl are going to get, are getting attacked by some sort of magic snakes. As they wrap around pretty much, well, Ka not, not wrap around, Caleb, 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 sorry. They do wrap around pretty much, pretty much, what was it? They do wrap around, uh, oh my god. Israel as pretty much well he's on the ground as the dragon as uh, Zim is about to get captured by pretty much Claudia as Calm jumps in one of the well magic snakes grabbing onto Calm's legs pulling him down to the ground as Calm tries to break through it as he's you know he can't break through with his super strength because it's magic as Calum props himself up using his laser vision trying to tone it down so he doesn't you know kill Claudia as he blasts Claudia into the concrete, knocking her out cold. As Callum uses his, you know, laser vision to try to blast the laser, try to blast the magic off of him. As before he could do that, the magic is turned off. Well, Claudia is knocked out cold, like he, she's out for the count. As Callum pretty much sees how the chains fall off of him, or the magic snake falls off of him, him being unchained. As Callum tells them that it's okay, as he flies back down. As Zorn is knocked out cold and his blade is broken in two. As Callum grabs, you know, Rayla, flies her back onto the, you know, trail as they still go on their, well, pretty much mission there. As well, since Claudia is taken down alongside Zorin, pretty much during this time, well, Claudia, or pretty much, not Claudia, but pretty much Callum. Takes them down pretty quickly, so the fight with Rayla and Callum doesn't go exactly, and Rayla and Zorn doesn't go exactly the same. It does stop pretty easily, and also the whole conversation with, you know, pretty much, well, Ca Claudia goes somewhat the same. As, you know, pretty much Callum is still the same thing, just overall not even talking to her, as she tries to talk to him, saying that, you know, it was, it was his, it was, a, it was her father's idea she had to do it as callum just doesn't want to talk to her as doing this time pretty much callum pretty much looks at her 
and says, how could you do this to us? And basically, Callum pretty much smirks, and she says, what is this? How, what? As Callum says, well, I do want to say, at first, I wanted to believe you guys, truly. But deep down inside, you guys, I didn't really believe you guys too much. Now, during this time, we would see that, well, Callum would have, you know, knocked out Claudia with a little flick on the forehead, kind of like Smallville Superman does when he knocks out people. As pretty much Claudia is knocked out cold, and Zorin and Claudia are laid next to each other on the floor as they, you know, continue on their journey, leaving them behind. Still, Deku, I mean, it's Callum using his light, laser vision on a low setting to weld back Zorin's sword so he doesn't, you know, he's not completely defenseless. So he's not gonna, you know, die on the journey back to the kingdom. Now, during this time, Callum and the rest of everybody else. They still ditch, but Claudia, the last Steph effort, tries to, you know, take him down. As she uses some magic to try to anchor the down, as they still try to fly off with the magical phoenix-type animal. As Calum uses his laser vision to just blast, pretty much, well, Claudia back down to the ground, trying to get her off of them. As, well, her tie with the magic is broken, or not broken, but she is put down. As pretty much she's, you know, dropped down to the ground. As Callum and the rest of everybody else, they ditch. As pretty much, well, the assassin or pretty much the person that was sent there to retrieve Callum saves him. Not saves him, but that assassin original that did step in to try to save Callum. He wouldn't step in in this original canon since Deku, I mean Callum. Sorry, I just did like 14 Deku what ifs the last few months and I, I'm just gotten way too used to saying Deku with my what ifs. So basically, pretty much Callum and the rest of everybody else, they get ready and basically they, you know, they did. They leave them behind and they leave. As Callum talks to Rayla still, him still, you know, feeling kind of bad about the whole experience, but him still, you know, not forgiving them completely since he does know that, well, they did try to betray him. As during this time, we see that Cla uh, Claudia's father is still plotting and scheming, doing the same thing that she that he did in canon or original. As during this time, pretty much, we would get switched to Zorin and Claudia trying to figure out, you know, what they're going to do next. As during this time, I'm going to leave it off here. Now, doing this, pretty much what would happen is they would be on their way back to Zadia, Zadia. As Callum would have looked into the stars, as he would have seen something go down on the ground, as he would use his well accelerating scene, as he would see closer and closer, seeing some sort of you know distress happening, as he would try to contemplate if he should jump off to stop the you know thing that was happening. It was basically kind of a I guess robbery or a shakedown by a couple of bandits in the forest area. As Callum would just, you know, let it happen as he didn't really want to get himself involved in this and he didn't want to lose the group because if he did jump down, he couldn't fly up because at this time, Callum can't fly right now at least. He can only super jump, he can only leap tall buildings and levitate. So yeah, that's basically it. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it off here guys. No, I did stutter a lot and this is mainly because I was trying to reread the script from last time. And try to get the story all put together but part five is going to be way more put together and overall is going to have a lot more action and fighting and a bunch of other stuff now hope you guys enjoy the video hope you guys like and subscribe and as always guys have a blessed day